first of all, Professor Carrick discovered that asymmetrically altering the afferent input to the thalamus resulted in an asymmetrical effect, asymmetrical effect on the size of the blind spot in each eye. This was attributed to an increase in brain function on the contralateral side due to changes in thalamocortical activation. We'll get into that in a second. That occurred because of multimodal sensory integration in thalamus. The stimulus utilized was a manipulation of the upper cervical spine, which is known to increase the frequency of firing of multimodal neurons in the areas of the thalamus and brainstem that protect the visual striate cortex. And again, this is referenced out of that neurology textbook I was talking about. And it's really important because what he's saying is the reason that blind spot got smaller was because we use one type of input, we use sensory input, we inputted the thalamus, and the thalamus is an egg deep within the brain where all sensory input except for smell goes through. Vision goes through it, hearing goes through it, taste goes through it, smell doesn't. But, but motion does, proprioception does. By using a proprioceptive stimulus, he inputted that thalamus, the thalamus as a whole, began to fire at a higher central integrative state. And because of that, it was able to substitute in that visual deficit. And this is so neat to us because it says a lot of things. So first of all, what it says is that input in one receptor-based system can influence perception in another receptor-based system, right? If set touch, proprioceptive input, can alter vision, could it alter hearing? Could it alter Harvey Lillard's hearing? And that's what I think happened. I think BJ got lucky. I think our Didi got lucky and he afferented that thalamus. Thalamus got more effective. All of a sudden that thalamus was functioning high enough for that input through the auditory nerve to actually pass through the thalamus into the temporal lobes for perception and Harvey Lillard got his hearing back. So I think that's our first um, mechanism right there to understand that. The second really important thing that this says is that sightedness matters. It's not okay to do the atlas on both sides. It's not okay to do it on the wrong side because that will make the brain deficit worse. It's important to get on the right side. And we're also really interested in adjusting the atlas on the correct side. Because what happens if they have a right atlas and you adjust them on the left? subluxation gets bigger and their, neuro their nervous functioning gets worse, right? And this led me to a theory of tying in brain hemisphericity with atlas laterality. And I strongly believe there could be a correlation between the two of them. Right atlas, decreased left brain function, larger blind spot. It's something that we need to research into the future, okay? But sightedness matters.